Hiya folks, so in this video I'm going to continue coding Pong in Pygame. So in the previous video I had gone as far as creating the game paddles and displaying them on the screen and giving some control over them. So the up and down arrow keys allows me to move the player paddle. Now the next thing I want to focus on in this video is creating the game ball. And I'm going to do that in more or less the same way as I did the paddle, it's just going to be another class. So this will be class ball. And I'm going to start off with an init function. So, in fact, I'm just going to copy this down from the paddle class because it's more or less the same in initialization process. It's going to take the x and the y coordinates. It's going to have an x and a y self. And I'm going to create it as a rect. However, the difference this time is, although it is going to be saved as a rectangle object for a collision, in reality, it's going to be a circle or it's going to be drawn as a circle. So I want to define a radius for the circle. I'll say my ball radius variable is 8 pixels. And now I can create this rect object in more or less the same way. I have self x, self y, but for the width and the height, it's just going to be the diameter of the ball, which is going to be self dot ball underscore rad multiplied by 2. And I'll just copy this across into here. And that creates my rect object. And now I have uh, to define the speed. But the ball is going to be moving up and down as well as left and right. So it's actually going to have two speeds. It will have an x speed and it will have a y speed. Now when I start the game, I want the ball to start off on the right hand side in front of the player panel. And I want it to move to the left side of the screen. So I want to move it in the left direction, meaning that x speed has to be negative. So I'll set this to minus 4, and why it doesn't really matter. I'm going to set this to positive 4. Uh, it just means that when the ball starts off, it's going to be moving down the way. So I've defined this function, or rather I've defined this class. I'll need to indent all this, and now I can create the, an instance of this ball. I'll come down here and I'll say create pong ball. I don't want to call this ball because that's the name of my class already. I'm going to instead call this pong. So pong equals ball. And all I need to supply is the x and the y coordinate. It's going to start off more or less where the player paddle was created, but a little bit in front of it. So I'll say screen width, but I'll say minus 60 instead. And for the height, again, it's going to be more or less the same. I'll paste this into here. Uh, but I want it to start a little bit lower down, so plus 50. Next thing I need to do, again, similar to what I did with the paddle class, I need to draw it onto the screen. I'm going to define a draw function for that. Draw self. It will do more or less the same thing, but instead of rect, this is going to say circle. It takes the display, which is screen, then a color, uh, and now I can't supply this rectangle object to it anymore. Instead, I need to give it an x and a y and a radius. So the x and y I already have, but these are the top left uh, coordinates, I need to define or I need to supply the center point of the circle. So that would be the same as the x and the y coordinates plus the radius. That would take me to the middle position. That means I can say self.x plus or rather self.rect.x uh, because the, the rectangle is going to be moving up, moving around the screen. Self ball radius. That's the starting or rather that's a central x position and a central y position is more or less the same thing and for the radius I've already got that defined self dot ball underscore rad alright so if I now come into my game loop I should be able to call this function of the pong instance where I've got these here draw ball and I just say pong dot draw so let's run this now just to see and you can see now I've got everything as before, but I do now have a game ball here. I can still move the paddle up and down, but the game ball isn't actually moving. And to address that, I can create another function within this class. So this function is going to be move. So again, you see it's very similar to the paddle class. It's got more or less the same functions within it. To move this ball up and down the screen, or to the left and right, all I'm going to be doing is increasing or decreasing 
its x and y positions by this speed variable here, or by both of these speed variables. So that's fairly straightforward. I'll just add a section here for update ball position. And I just want to move my rectangle. So the rectangle x coordinate needs to increase by the x speed. And the rectangle uh, y coordinate needs to increase by the y speed. So that's all that I need for that function. And uh, now I can come in here and add it in below. So move ball, pong, dot move. Uh, let's run that again. Straight away you can see it starts off here and it just moves off the screen in the direction that I had given it the speeds for. So that's all fine, but it's not really colliding with anything. So I want to add some collision detection into here. Collision detection. And this again is also quite straightforward. So check collision first of all with the top margin. Essentially, because this ball is a rectangle, it's got a, a top, bottom, left, right, and a whole bunch of other variables. So when I'm checking for collision, I just want to check if the rectangle top has exceeded the margin. So again, because it's a y coordinate, I'm looking for a less than value. So if the top of the rectangle has a smaller y coordinate than the margin, it means it's gone above it. All I need to do is flip the speed that it's going up at. So self speed y gets inverted. So to recap, the only way that this ball would have exceeded the margin is if it was moving up the way. That means that the y coordinate was decreasing. So the speed y would have been negative. So as soon as it hits the margin, or hits the top of the screen, I just flip that speed and instead the ball now starts moving down the way. So now I can copy this over and do the same thing for when I hit the bottom of the screen. So now I'm looking for the bottom of the rectangle exceeding the screen height. And the action is going to be the same again. I'm just going to flip the Y speed. So now I can run this again. And there you can see the ball is bouncing off. And now it's just going off the screen. So I don't have anything at the moment, no detection for what happens when it goes off the left and right borders, but I don't want it to bounce off the screen. Instead, I just want it to detect that one of the players, so either player one or the computer, has scored a point. So I'm going to have a separate section here for check for out of bounds. And the check is going to be quite similar. So I'll add this if statement. And this time I'm looking for if the left-hand side of the rectangle has gone off the left side of the screen, then it means that the player has scored. So I want to define a new variable in here. Self.winner is going to start off as zero. And I'll add a comment to explain this variable. So one means player one has scored. And minus one means CPU has scored. So by assigning this winner function or winner variable to either one or minus one, I'm going to determine who scored the point. So if I've gone off, if the ball has gone off the left-hand side of the screen, that means it's the player that scored. Therefore, winner becomes one. If, on the other hand, the ball goes off the right-hand side of the screen, so if the right-hand side of the rectangle has exceeded the screen width, that means that the CPU has scored a point. Now these variables, because they're contained within this class, they're not going to be accessible outside of this unless I return them. So what I will do is I will come down here and I'll return those variables, or rather just that one variable, self.winner. So now this move function is going to be returning this variable back to it. And if I come back down to where I'm calling this function, I can say winner equals pong.move. Now, before I use this, I need to define it up here in my game variables. So I need to set it off as winner is zero, just the same way as I defined it in here. So now just to test this and to debug it, I'm going to print winner. Because at the moment, nothing's going to be happening. Although it will detect that someone has won, I don't have any more code added in yet to 
process it. So the scores aren't increasing, the game's not resetting, nothing like that is happening. But I just want to check that in the background this is actually working. So I'm going to run the code again, and it's all saying zero. But you see, as soon as it went off the screen, it started printing ones. So this is working, and it's giving me back uh, a number for that winner. And the next thing to do is to process this variable, add some AI, and add some collision as well. I'm going to cover all of that in future videos. So for now, if this has been useful, then please leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with more videos, then please subscribe. So thanks for watching.